Good morning, around about 6.30 in the morning on Monday the 28th of uh, March. A um, couple of uh, housekeeping notes. Number one, we have a noon webinar later on today. I will be doing a webinar. Um, but number two, um, much of Europe is on holiday uh, today. So uh, currencies specifically will likely see thin markets. Uh, a lot of volume in FX comes out of London. I think it's something like 40%. So with London offline today, you're going to find currencies very, very quiet. Um, so just tread a little bit carefully there. In terms of uh, futures, uh, you'll probably see a little bit less of an impact. Um, I'm not aware that uh, as as high a percentage of volume emanates uh, out of the UK. But regardless, currencies tread very carefully. I think they could be somewhat sideways today. Okay, so um, obviously no analysis from Friday. Good Friday, uh, Easter now um, behind us uh, here in the US at least. Um, but again, uh, Easter Monday is being observed across Europe. Um, dollar index. So we saw a rise in the dollar over the last week or so um, from support down in this area here. And if you recall, I've been looking for resistance in this area here. I'm going to be watching today to see whether, in fact, that does actually um, work. We've actually got the dollar kind of pausing in this area. It's paused here for the last two or three days. I want to see whether we actually do get a bit of a pullback in the dollar from these levels, which obviously would imply a bit of a leg to the upside in the euro. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to be looking today to see whether the euro can remain above support on the 240, which we'll look at in just a second. So that's the dollar. Um, we're kind of pausing at resistance as of right now. Uh, dollar on a weekly no man's land obviously um, again we've been bouncing at support on both the daily and weekly about a week ago the weekly though has now moved into no man's land so i'm going to be using the daily for my um, uh, guidance treasuries um if you recall what i've been saying uh, last week was i would look for support down in this area right here that's actually panned out pretty well uh, we had a little bit of a pop-up, hit the upper parallel, um, and fell back. Uh, and I'd been looking to see whether what had previously been resistance, obviously back in this area here, three times, would it become support? And the answer as of right now is, well, yes. In fact, let me get all the circles and lines out of the way. You can see that we've actually come down, we've hit the line, and we seem to be getting a little bit of support there. So I'm going to be watching the 30-year to see whether we can actually uh, move back up into this area here. So that's not too far above where we are right now, uh, probably like one handle above where we are. So I'm going to watch Treasuries for a move to the upside, and conversely, I'm watching e mini s and to see whether we get a bit of a pullback, which we'll look at in just a second also. Um, okay, notes, 10-year notes. Um, so I, I kind of started talking last week about the fact that I had been looking for resistance in this area here, although to be absolutely fair, probably a little bit lower at the up, uh, upper parallel itself. I'm not massively convinced that this slope is doing a lot. Um, it seems to me more apparent that what's going on here is that we just simply have horizontal resistance. So I'm going to leave the ten-year. Sorry, I'm going to yeah the ten-year uh, notes. I'm going to leave the ten-year alone for a little while and focus really on the thirty-year. Thirty-year seems to be working much better. Um, the, the slope itself is working very well, uh, both in terms of support as well as in terms of resistance. But again, we actually do have resistance now becoming support. So I will be looking to see whether we get a leg to the upside in both um, notes and bonds. E-mini S&P. So what I said was I was looking to see whether we get a bit of a pullback in the E-mini S&P today. So uh, we fell into an area of support um, Thursday of last week. And if you recall, I said that th this would be a place really to watch to see whether we could hold above it. We've actually done that quite well. In fact, all this is is a sliding parallel from the prior low. If I zoom out, you can see it quite nicely. There it is. There's your prior low back in the early part of March. That's exactly where we bounced the second time on Thursday. But when we rose to the upside, what I talked about was I would look for resistance in this area here. And this is really quite similar to what we've been looking at uh, in terms of treasuries. So we're looking for resistance to become support in treasuries. But here what I'm looking is to see whether support becomes resistance. So we're kind of really just looking at the inverse structure for equities versus treasuries. And that's what I'm watching today. I'm watching to see whether the e mini S&P is going to fall away from resistance in this area here. Also pay attention to the fact that this, if, if it does actually get a pullback and if we do start to fall away from this area here, this would be the second lowering of a ceiling. If you recall, we talked about um, the ceiling that we had up in this area here back at the very uh, start of March and then we dropped to this ceiling here which remember we were watching it grinding along resistance throughout the early part of last week and in fact the late part of the prior week. So we've been paying attention to the ES grinding along resistance for um, several days. We fell back, get amounts from support but now look it looks potentially like we have a lowered ceiling once more. So keep an eye on the E-mini S&P today. I really want to see whether in fact we will continue to see support 
in this area here, 2021, about 13 points below where we are right now. So I'm going to be watching e mini S&P pretty closely to see whether we hold above that support. But for me right now, I'm, I'm a little bit wary of the e mini S&P um, sitting at potential resistance and Treasury sitting at potential support. Now, on to currencies. So again, I will reiterate what I said at the beginning, which is that currencies may be uh, incredibly thin today. Uh, that being said, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, and Canadian dollar. I'm watching all three of them to see whether, in fact, we're actually going to get a strengthening versus the US dollar. So if you recall, um, we've been paying attention to the Australian dollar on this particular slope, and it seems to be working relatively well. We actually got a bounce uh, back in this area here, which was middle of March, when we worked our way back. In fact, I'd been looking for support, if you recall, back in this area here, which we did initially see. Then we saw a little bit of a flush. Uh, I believe it was uh, news. Um, we've moved lower, and what I'm paying attention to now is to see whether resistance back here, which has become support, is again going to be support. We talked about this, I believe, back on Thursday of last week. It's actually worked. We actually got a bounce in this area here, so we actually have support. And in fact, um, last night, we got another bounce. The problem I have is what I talked about again, I believe, last Thursday, which is support, 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 and again support here has become, in fact, this is what we were looking for the back end of last week. Do we, in fact, get resistance just in this area here? And as of right now, we, we are. So that makes me a little bit more cautious. So yes, we actually have the support. There's your support. But the problem is there's your resistance. There's your support. I'm watching for resistance pretty much close to where we are right now. I want to see whether we can punch through that resistance to the upside. Not looking for much. I only need like 20, 25 pips to the upside to tell me that we are actually taking out this resistance to the upside. But for me, support has worked. We got one bounce back on Thursday. We got another bounce last night. I need to see us stay above this level here for a leg to the upside. And I need to see us take out this line right here to the upside. So Australian dollar is working pretty well at the moment in terms of support. New Zealand dollar equally is working pretty well in terms of support. So if you recall back here, which was the early part of last week, I said to watch this line here for support in the New Zealand dollar. If I get all the lines out of the way, you can see again, we actually came down. We got a bounce on Thursday right here. We got a second bounce on uh, Thursday evening. We kind of been a little bit, little bit more sloppy along the support line last night. But again, we're sitting above support. The real thing to take away, though, if, if you zoom in in the New Zealand dollar, is what I'm warning about in terms of currencies generally over the next uh, 24 hours, which is really this is the New Zealand dollar since Wednesday. So our range has been effectively from 66.70 to 67.10, about a 40 pip range for the last three or four days. So just tread a little bit carefully, a little bit sideways there, but we do seem to be, again, holding at support as of right now. So New Zealand dollar is at support, Australian dollar is at support, Canadian dollar, I'd been looking for resistance at the upper parallel um, in this area right here, which again, if you recall, we've been paying attention to crude oil um, side by side with the Canadian dollar. I'd been looking over the last um, uh, few days of last week for a move lower from resistance in Canadian, uh, sorry, in crude oil, which in fact, if we look at crude oil, here it is. So we rose up into resistance. This is, if you recall last week, that's where we were in terms of crude. I said that I thought we were, we were at resistance and I was looking for a move down into support. Well, we've got the move down. Let me get all these circles out of the way. We got our move to the downside. This, though, is where I would have been looking for support. And we really have not had that support. In fact, we've actually sliced straight through it. If anything, I'm probably going to be watching to see whether support here now becomes resistance in this area here for a leg to the downside. So I'm going to be watching crude oil pretty closely today to see whether, in fact, we start moving lower. I will also draw in a sliding parallel from this spike low right here to see whether we actually can manage to cling on above support. But for me, can, uh, sorry, crude oil... We've fallen nicely from resistance, 42 and a half. We've been down to as low as 38 and a half, let's call it. So this is like a $6 move, no, sorry, $4 move um, in just a few sessions. So that worked out incredibly well in terms of the move down from resistance. But if we actually go back and look at um, Canadian dollar, what you'll see is the Canadian dollar equally has weakened to the upside, but we are now holding at resistance. 
So we actually have resistance back in this area here and a second time, and this is where we are right now. If the Canadian dollar moves up much more, and I mean even like 50, 60 pips to the upside, it will definitely look as if we have an upside breach of this particular slope. If that happens, my expectation is we'll see an acceleration I, um, both to the upside in terms of the Canadian dollar and to the downside in terms of crude oil. So I think Canadian dollar is in kind of a critical area right now. I would look at the Canadian dollar separately from the Aussie and the Kiwi because the Aussie and the Kiwi, obviously they are still both both commodity currencies but the Canadian dollar um, is much more tightly uh, connected to what uh, the moves and machinations in terms of crude oil so I'd be watching uh, Canadian dollar uh, a little bit separately from the Aussie and the Kiwi so Canadian dollar just tread carefully if if crude um, continues to move lower I think we are going to see an upside breach in the Canadian dollar so I will be watching Canadian dollar closely to see whether we hold above this or sorry below this resistance one of the things I'll be looking at, on, by the way, on the noon webinar is we're going to be looking at the currencies on, on larger time frames. So I'm going to be looking at the currencies on the daily charts um, as part of today's webinar, just to get an idea in terms of where are we um, for the bigger picture uh, across the currencies. Anyway, Canadian dollar, um, Aussie and Kiwi, there you go. EU pairs. Um, so as you know, I've been watching the EU pairs on daily charts. Let me have a look at those quickly. So Swiss franc, um, we've been rising out of um, support for the last several days. Remember, we got one bounce, we got a second bounce, we got a third bounce. And so I've been watching the Swiss franc moving out of the support to see whether we can actually reach up into resistance. As far as I'm concerned, the Swiss franc is in no man's land. I see no particular reason for a turn where we are right now. Similarly, with the euro, let me just refresh that, make sure that that's current. Similarly with the euro, um, I'd been watching resistance, bit of a flush, back to resistance. In fact, we did have resistance here as, all, as well. Um, this is the slope that I'm paying attention to. So again, I've been looking for a move lower in the euro. And again, it's been working out relatively well. Um, we've actually fallen back from 13.5 to 11.5, so 200 pips. Um, but as with the Swiss franc, to me, this is no man's land. I have no strong opinion in terms of um, strength or weakness other than watching the dollar index on that daily chart. So back to the 240-minute charts, um, the euro, the only place I've been looking for support in the euro on a, on a smaller time frame, the 240, is right here. And it's kind of hard to tell whether the line's really doing anything, and it's for the same reason I, I think we looked at, I think it was the New Zealand dollar. Uh, this is since Wednesday. That's what's going on in currencies over the last three days. Absolutely nothing. Now, to be fair, again, the 24th was Monday Thursday. 25th was Good Friday. Tw uh, uh, today, the 28th is Easter Monday. So we're, we're still kind of like uh, digesting the Easter holiday. And again, most of Europe is um, shut today. So you're going to see very thin conditions. So th this sideways action in a lot of these currencies might continue on into tomorrow. So just tread very, very carefully in terms of those currencies. But that being said, I am watching to see whether the euro can hold above support in this area here and if we get a bit of a touch say this morning or this afternoon down here um, at the same time as potentially the dollar sees a touch at resistance that would be something that's worth paying attention to but again as far as i'm concerned the thing that really worries me about the currencies today and the reason that i'll probably be on the sidelines for the uh, entirety of today um, from a trading perspective is literally what we're looking at right here there is nothing to be interested in here in terms of um, direction we're just trading sideways swiss franc well again we're kind of like trading pretty much sideways over the last few days um, this is wednesday of last week and again you can see that we're, we're not really going anywhere um, we, we reached the sort of like 9760s back on wednesday and we're at 97.69 as of right now so again we're just not really going anywhere i have no real strong opinion in terms of the swiss franc on the 240 minute chart other than i am paying attention to this downtrending channel but again no man's land i will leave it and wait and see how we pan out during today and into tomorrow and hopefully as the volume picks back up tomorrow as uh, europe uh, comes back online we might start to get some better direction british pound so again british pound remember resistance double tap one tap double tap so we're looking for a move down out of resistance in the british pound again it's worked out incredibly well we're down from 45 and change we've been down to 40 and a half so we've been down pretty pretty reasonably 450 pips i'd been looking to see whether we would hold above support in this area here we obviously didn't there was no trade whatsoever because if you look we just sliced straight through the line so as of thursday what i said was I would simply now watch to see whether we get resistance in this area here and unfortunately we again as is the case with the other pairs just we're, we're pretty much drifting i will draw in a sliding parallel 
right there and i will watch to see whether the pound gives us support down in this area here but for me the british pound if you look at the daily chart again if you recall i need to get all these circles out of the way so if you recall once we started getting up into um, this area here we were starting to look for resistance in the british pound to be fair we didn't quite touch that resistance i've been looking just a little bit higher i've been looking up in this area here 45 and a half we actually only went up to about the 45 10 area um, we fell back we put in a double bottom if i recall i think i just deleted that a second ago there you go there's the double bottom that we put in last week um, I will simply watch to see whether the 40, uh, the 4040s holds in terms of that double bottom to the downside. Um, I'm going to watch the British pound to see whether we can move back up into resistance in this area here. So for me, the EU pairs, I'm going to be watching to see whether they can hold above support. Um, and in the case of the Swiss franc, whether they can move back down from resistance. The one that I would probably pay attention to most is the euro. I would watch the euro on a 240 minute chart. Um, in terms of the commodity pairs, I would look at the Australian dollar on a 240-minute chart to see whether we can maintain our altitude above support. New Zealand dollar, absolutely the same thing. I want to see whether we can stay above support. And the Canadian dollar, I, I would keep an eye on it, but in all honesty, my expectation is we will see a breach through resistance. I think we will see a breach through resistance, and that's going to be driven by the fact that I think that what's going on here um, with uh, crude oil is that we potentially have support in this area here becoming resistance in this area here and if we continue to move to the downside in in Canadian, sorry in crude oil my guess is we will see cad move higher through resistance the other thing to pay attention to is that if crude oil continues to move lower i think it actually might put a bit of a drag on e mini s p to the downside so i i am actually watching even though it's going to be very quiet today especially especially in the currencies i am watching for potentially lower equities higher treasuries lower crude higher cad um, and i'm going to be watching aussie and kiwi to see if they can hold above support and i'm going to be watching the euro uh, to see if it can hold above support swiss franc i'm kind of a bit more on the sidelines british pound um, similarly japanese yen in fact i think i haven't looked at the japanese yen let me look at that quickly um, so if you recall we've been paying attention to a wedge um, we bounced out of the 111 area we've got a double tap in this area here and really it's just a straight line to the upside um, looks like we might be breaking out of that wedge let me try and tidy up the chart a little bit so it looks like we might breaking out of that wedge um, keep, keep an eye on the yen but honestly the, i don't really have too much that i'm interested in the yen um, i'd probably watch next around in fact i tell you one thing i would watch I find it interesting actually that we have support here and support and support and we've topped precisely in this area here as of right now at least watch to see whether we can actually um, punch through this line right here which is around the one uh, 11370 area about 20 pips above where we are right now um, it seems very apparent that the Imini &E S&P and Japanese yen have, have broken apart in terms of their correlation. Um, historically, the yen has been relatively well correlated to the Imini &E S&P. That obviously is not the case right now. When we do the noon webinar, the other thing I will look at is potentially the indices on larger charts. So we'll just look generally at larger charts on Monday's we or sorry on today's webinar, just to see if we can get a bit of a better um, uh, idea in terms of where things are bigger picture wise. Alrighty, I'll leave it at that. You'll have a great morning. Again, currencies-wise, just be very careful. Um, thin markets. Uh, again, I'll be pretty much sitting on my hands all day. Uh, you stay safe, and uh, I'll talk to you all at noon. Take care. Bye-bye.